Hi, welcome everyone. It's just now six o'clock. This is a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. My name is Angela Mills and I work for the town manager's office. I will be starting this meeting and passing it off. Everyone on this meeting should know that this is being recorded and will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel shortly. Um, Matt, do you want me to make you host and then you can make Julianne co-host? Sounds great. Okay. I should find the script while I do that. Hey, Angela. No, I still owe Hi. you times to come by. Sorry, it's been really. Oh, busy. there's no rush at all. It's Good. just, it's not, a, and, and it's a, not as big a bag as I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to need a hand truck. It's really tiny. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. it probably isn't going to be this week. Uh, this week's I'm, crazy. I totally get it. I cool. get it. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> So you have a couple attendees in the attendee room um, and Matt will make you co-host so that you can see who they are. And um, and I wish you a good meeting. Thanks, Thank Andrew. you. Have a great night. Yeah, thanks. You too. Thanks. thanks for all the hard work. Hi, Rachel. Hello there. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm always better when the weather warms up. Kind of in denial about mm. the winter still. Oh, Mindy Dom is in the um, waiting room. Hello, Mindy. Oh, I guess hey, I Mindy. we are just we're going to be waiting for a, a quorum before we begin the recording and all that. So just so folks know, yeah, need five for a quorum. And I did I did communicate with um, at least one member today, so I, I'm confident we'll get to four. And hopefully find another. Are, is, are, are either of you, are your allergies kicking in? I've been pretty good. I, but I, I just get ahead of it with NASA court and I just don't mess around. I just know it's coming. Hey, Cody. Okay. I think he's still connecting. I'm starting to realize that I really, I need to just be proactive like that because it just sneaks up on me and I think I've been sick. I mean, why have I been sick for so long? And then you yeah. realize I'm not sick. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's been oh, hey, Eleanor. Ah, oh, great. So it looks like um, as soon as we know that Cody's officially connected, uh, then we have a quorum, right? Yeah, I think we'll, well, I see. I see he's there. It doesn't say he's connecting. So. Um, yeah. hey. Thank Cody. you. Okay, well, why don't I go ahead and jump right in since we're at quorum and we have a packed full agenda for the night. Um, so I'll start with the script. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Amherst Cultural Council meeting for April 11th, 2023. Um, we will, uh, let's see. So this is, um, this is the script that we read before every virtual meeting. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Um, that's by clicking on the Zoom link. Um, and then this recording gets uploaded to the town's YouTube channel promptly after the meeting. Uh, so no in-person meeting, no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort is made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, and in the event that we are unable to do so, or regardless, uh, we will post this on the town's YouTube channel. Um, shortly after the meeting. And so with that, we will go ahead and just do our audio check and our roll call. Um, just kind of read off the screen if that's okay. Uh, Julianne? I am here. Rachel? I'm here. Eleanor? I am here and I may have to dip out in about half an hour. I just have to tour a student around. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, Robin? I'm here. And Cody? Yeah. Great. Um, okay, and our um, secretary is not here at the moment, so I'm wondering if Julianne, would you mind starting a document, or and I can I can help chip in on it too, or anybody else who wants to. I mean, yeah, we we can do that. Although I think uh, generally to just gets the recording and takes it from there, which reminds me we need to record. It it is recording now. It is recording. Okay. So um yeah, I'll I'll work on that, but I, I know that she'll go through the notes later. Okay. Well thank you. This is a, yeah, this is how we get the notes is with the secretary. Um 
Okay, so we uh, we actually don't have any minutes from last meeting. I didn't I didn't get those. So, but we will um, get those caught up and posted. And we're actually only one meeting behind, which is pretty good. I'm I'm participating in a number of public bodies, and I will say that being one meeting behind on posting your notes is is something to aim for. So I feel I feel quite good about that. We have a fabulous secretary in Leah. Um, and then we do have uh, three members of the public, well, two members of the public, and then one um, elected official in our um, in our waiting room right now. So I think what we'll do is um, invite public comment. If anybody would like to make it, you would just use the little hand raise feature or ask question feature on your Zoom screen, and we would promote you into the meeting to to make your comment. Okay, so I, I'm going to bring in everybody with their hands raised, which is um, George Ryan and also Rep Dome. Oh, good evening. Good evening. I'm not sure if you're talking to me or to George Ryan. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking to both of you. It's, it's lovely to see you. Um, I'm sorry that my video is not working. I'm in my car and um, I pulled over, but my camera for some reason isn't connecting. No, we really appreciate you being here. And uh, for those who don't know, Minnie Dome is our um, state rep and has been just a really fabulous champion for um, for Amherst funding for MCC and promoting the events that we, that we uh, support. So um, we're thrilled to have you here, Mindy. Well, thank you so much. I hope this is okay. I'm just going to jump in. I just didn't want, I first of all, I wanted to thank you all for your great work. I think that um, the Cultural Council has done an outstanding job in reviewing applications and supporting so much in our community and for our community. Um, and I also want to note that I was really impressed with the amount of money that the Cultural Council received, but you you really handled it with great integrity and process, so thank you. And I also wanted to let you know, if you didn't already know, that this session, I've been assigned and appointed to be the House Chair for the Joint Committee on Tourism, Arts, and Culture. And so I hope through that position, I'll be able to learn more about your process, advocate more for local cultural councils, um, you know, make sure that I think that MCC does an incredible job of um, distributing the funds across the whole state, including our region. Um, but we're going to make sure that Western Mass doesn't get lost in all of those areas, tourism, arts, and culture. And um, I just wanted to reach out to you in this new position, not only as your rep, but as the chair of this committee, and welcome your bringing any concerns, issues, or problems that you see in the process to my attention so that I can act on. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here. And um, will you be able to stick around for, for half an hour or so? Yes, I will be able to. Okay, great. So <laughs> after George gives his public comment, we have we have a, um, a matter that we just wanna make sure that you're aware of. And it's, it's, a, it's a positive thing, but I think something that, that you would enjoy um, discussing with us. Great, thank you. Okay, um, George Ryan. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm actually here tonight on behalf of the Vote Yes for Amherst Schools uh, campaign. And I'd like to ask the Cultural Council to consider publicly endorsing the new elementary school project that's going to be come, coming before the voters on May 2nd. In fact, um, because of mail in balloting, um, some voters will be voting uh, in the coming days. One of the many attractive features of the proposed new school beyond its, its flexible classrooms and its light field classrooms um, and its net zero carbon neutral footprint is a performance space slash auditorium, which can be accessible to the community even when the school itself is closed. I know as members of the Cultural Council, you know full well that the arts are essential to a fully lived life and an Amherst exposure to the arts begins in the earliest years. I believe the proposed new school will greatly augment that exposure and provide a priceless benefit both to the students in the new school, as well as to the community as a whole. The Vote Yes campaign has already received an endorsement from the Energy and Climate Action Committee and is now reaching out to other boards and committees in the town 
for their endorsements. I'm asking you this evening, if you could, to take a moment and consider adding your support to what many of us see as a transformational project for the town and one whose impact will long outlast us. So thank you. Thank you very much, very much, George. Yeah, um, thank you for for joining us and you know bringing this crucial crucial matter to to our attention. Um, I myself have uh, three children, and my youngest is is now a sophomore. So, um, you know, I I will benefit indirectly from the new the new school, and yet it is something that is so very important to to, to our community in in many ways. Um, and uh, I, I would motion that that uh, we vote to determine if if we are in support, and um, so that we can. Yes, Robin. Oh, okay. Just gonna put it. I am not sure this is something we can do as a volunteer council, but as unofficial employees. I don't know what the status is, but we have a sign step. Um, I'm not sure it's something we can do. Well, the way I see it, we have it, it does fall within our our charter, if you will, which is to promote arts and culture. I mean, as you all often point out, that science is part of that culture, and you know, if, if students aren't learning science appropriately with the right facilities in our schools, then they can't contribute to meaningful meaningful culture around that, much less, you know, arts and, and um, literature and, and, and all of that. So um, I think it's a venue and an instrument to um, teach and foster and yeah. make available venue space to that part. Definitely. Yeah, the ven the venue piece is, is really kind of a, a bare minimum of, you know, that's something that our grantees, you know, collectively struggle with all the time. And I'd say yep. we have a responsibility from that point of view alone to, to uh, yes, sorry. So I just, I want to make um, a, just a procedural comment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and first of all, just in the interest of full disclosure, I'm going to recuse myself from this discussion because I'm one of the co-chairs of the Vote Yes campaign. So I, I don't wanna be uh, part of this. And, you know, Robin, you're you're right, I think to ask about conflict of interest law. And I, I don't think I necessarily need to recuse, but I think it's it's appropriate to do so yeah. just out of um, bias. Yeah. But um, because, this, because this was not posted on our agenda, um, mm -hmm. I think that a motion to take any action on this would, we should hold off on it until the part of the agenda where we talk about the things that are not reasonably anticipated. So oh. towards towards the end of the meeting, I think would be a, a better thing to um, to do. But that that being said, I'll I'll be recused anyway. So um, so, we, so Julian. So we can't talk about this now. We need to table it. I think we need to table it until the forty eight. The um the sort of the the how's, what's the phrasing? Um, new business not reasonably anticipated forty eight hours in advance. Because if if we're gonna make a motion to take an action, that would be new business, and it wasn't. And you know we could have anticipated that. You know, George would come. Mm. Okay, that's mm. that's like way way be. I've if that's what it is, I'm fine with that. I I haven't really been able to dive into uh, meeting mechanics and processes that much, so I'll hold off. I just got excited. <laughs> okay, no, thank you very much, and and I um, but like I said, I will, I will recuse at that time. Yeah. Um, so so thank you, George, and uh, you're welcome to hang around, and you're welcome to hang around in the in the meeting or in the waiting room. I and um. Glad to have you. Oh, I guess I suppose if your if your comment is over, we'll put you back in the waiting room probably. Um, so let me do that if I can. Change role to attendee. Okay. Um, all right. So the the we actually have two two pieces of very substantial discussion for tonight, um, and I'm going to jump right into the bid update. Um, and a quick recap for Mindy and anybody who wasn't here. Um, is that we, the Cultural Council, set aside $7,500 from our FY23 allocation to um, promote and, and put on the inaugural Spring Amherst Block Party for the Arts. Um, and it, so it was, a, it was a big undertaking. Uh, we were going to partner with the Business Improvement District. And due to, you know, truly family-related factors outside of anybody's control, 
the bid is not able to do that logistical work for us this this year. Um, and and I think we all knew it was a ambitious undertaking to begin with. And and then you know the bid losing one of their main staffers, the person who was going to be doing all of the vendor contracting, um, you know, it really just it just was not a tenable idea to pursue that um, spring block party this year. However, we are, um, you know, we'll, we'll have an open conversation about potentially putting something on the books for next year. And I think that's, you know, that's for future meetings to to iron out. Um, because what happened last month for anybody who wasn't here is uh, we and and Cody especially, but we generated the idea of sort of tagging on to the fall block party, which is a longstanding Amherst institution. Um, and so with the blessing of the group, Julianne and I reached back out to the bid, to Gabrielle, um, and, and it essentially said to her, you know, could we, um, could we allocate some funds to, you know, to the fall block party and, and have a presence there instead? And she answered with a full-throated yes. And I will just read, I'll just read to you the response because it's fairly quick. Um, dear Matt and Julianne, I love this idea. We want to do a full stage on the north entrance this year. So the north entrance of Pleasant Street. Um, and I don't know if that's that's not all the way to Kendrick Park, but it usually runs almost to Kendrick in, in the past. Kendrick. Yeah. Um, we want to do a full stage on the north entrance this year and program it having heavily. We could take all of the current artist creatives who have shown interest. That's So that's to say we had a list of about 20 people who had shown interest in the spring block party. So she's saying that basically we could have a stage with space for all of them who were going to participate in the spring. Um, so she said, we could take all the current artists and creatives who have shown interest uh, and work with them at the fall 23 block party instead of the spring one. Um, and then if we can contribute, um, you know, 2,500 is kind of the number that we, we tossed around last month. Um, the 2,500 would pay for the stage, lighting and production. Um, and then we would be the sponsor of the event, uh, you, you know, of the of the overall block party, along with whatever additional sponsor she has. Um, so I think, you know, her response was was very similar in writing to the I thought the enthusiasm that we all had with the idea when we spoke about it. And I think, um, you know, again, we didn't get into any uh, great detail with her other than just sort of a, you know, a general how do you feel about this? And then we wanted to bring it back to. The full council and, and just have a discussion about um what this would mean so robin so are you talking about 2500 or the 7500 because the next year you could take for the next cycle which would be 2024 you can take and put that into a spring and take money out of that instead of this and is this the the grant that we apply for? Uh, so have I, have, I have an update on the festivals and projects grant, but right now what we're talking yep. about, the festivals and projects okay. is not really, is, is not applicable to the fall because it has to be spent by June 30th. So what we would be, what we're talking about is 2,500 from that 75 that we set aside for the spring block party, using that in the fall for this event and then replenishing We'd have to talk about if we're going to replenish it for next year, or, you know, or use more or, or whatever. But I think the point is, we know we've set the money aside to do an event that showcases our grantees, um, you know. And so the question is just sort of, do we want to pursue it? You know, do we are the same volunteers who are willing to help with the spring block party still willing to help with the fall? Um, are there are there concerns around merging? You know, this this is merging. And by the way, Christy just joined. Hello, Christy. Just want to do a sound check with her. Probably muted. Um, we, oh, hi. I heard <laughs> hi. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm in the car. So that's why I've got the audio off. I mean, and the video off. Not a problem. Great to see you. And also Leah has joined us. Hi, Leah. You want me to do an audio check? Or is Done. this? Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's great to see you both or hear from you both. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think I think the floor is kind of open for discussion about this fall block party idea. Um, I, I think we, you know, it's probably worth 
you know, it's probably worth putting a motion out there to, you know, reallocate that 2,500 into the fall block party with the same basic intent as we had for the spring, just so it's official. Um, and if anybody wants to make that motion, that sometimes that helps frame the discussion. Um, so what happens to the other 5,000? We were going to be rolling the full 75. So now we'll just roll five. And then decisions about what we're doing with that rolling five, and then also possibly applying for another thing and working towards the spring event, that wouldn't be just, that would be discussed in the next grant cycle. I think so, Leah. Yeah. I mean, I think we all should keep talking about um, spring 24 because I think one that we know it's going to take a lot of ramp up to get there. So I don't want to say we put it off until, you know, next year, but that we, that's not the, that's not the immediate you know, sort of a question. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll make the motion that we <clears throat> roll 2,500 of the 75. Oh, Rachel has her hand up. Sorry, Rachel. No, it's okay. I was going to make the motion, but now I'll second it. How's that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me, let me, I motion that we um, roll 2,500 that was previously um, intended for the 2023 block party to the fall block party, fall block party uh, to support cultural council um, uh, participation there, grantees participation there. I'll second. second. Yeah. Great. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. Um, and we don't have to go straight to a vote if folks want to discuss. So we'll just give it another minute or two if, if anybody wants to keep the discussion going. So this would be our stage for grantees that we just did. And the money would cover sound, stage, roof of it. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good deal. I'm I'm just super grateful to honestly to Cody Cody because you know we were in a place of of feeling a little bummed out <laughs> to be to be technical the technical term uh, and you know and I think this idea I mean look you want to talk about an audience you know this is a this is a nice way to to and it also gets us lets us get our feet wet in terms of you know doing something something in person it's been a couple of years since any of that happened um, so oh um will this cover ASL or could we put another 500 in or something like that? I think that's a good idea. Um, I think you might, you could, you could suggest a friendly amendment to Julianne and Rachel about, um, you know, adding on the cost of ASL interpreting to the event, to our stage. And, and I think if they accepted that, we could just sort of proceed. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I think it's something we should explicitly. I mean, I I think we absolutely should do that, although we could also do that closer to the time of the event. Um, as far as I, I there no, are no. funds that it would be available, so we could could do that based on an actual actual expense as opposed to tagging it and it falling short. Or... You're right. That's yeah, you're absolutely right. And and we have we, we will have a few several meetings before then. So that's that's absolutely right. So I guess I propose an amendment that uh, we remain flexible in the amount that we give so that we can cover the real costs of making it more accessible with ASL and who knows, it might be something else, but certainly with ASL. And we don't know how much it's going to cost, so. Sorry, did anybody I can't hear you, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> Christy, do you want to try to say that again? She must be in a pocket. Yeah. I'm, I was nothing. Sorry. Okay. Can I second that amendment? Do we second amendments? I forgot. The addendum of the amendments or something like that. Or, yeah. But usually it's just, as I understand it, make the amendment and then the, the mo mover and the seconder of the original. Oh. Okay. They just accept the, the idea. 
I accept. Me too. Great. Yeah, thank you for that, Robin. Um, okay. So, I mean, you know, uh, the good thing is that the group, we ha as a group have had several conversations about, you know, how we're going to operationalize this. We've got a, we've got a list of grantees who've expressed interest in the spring. Certainly, you know, so I mean, there's a, there's obviously there's a lot of work to do communications wide to get that message out and, and sort of round folks up, but we've already sort of teased out um, how we're going to do it. So, and we've already started. So I think it's, you know, it's a jolly task now is bringing good news to folks who are, who are disappointed by this, you know, understandably disappointed by the spring. So I'm going to move to a vote unless anybody feels differently. Um, why don't we go ahead and, and just do a roll call vote um, and I'll just go across the screen. Uh, I'll start with Robin. Uh, yes. Cody. Aye. Eleanor. Yes. Leah. Yes. And Christy. Yes. I'm a yes as well. And so that is unanimous uh, seven. Look, we also got a, more than a quorum. What a great, what a great council we have. Um, <laughs> so we have a unanimous vote um, to uh, to allocate twenty five hundred for the for the performance at the fall block party, with um, additional flexibility for accessibility supports, including but not limited to ASL. So wonderful, y'all. Thank you very much, Rachel. Please. Just a quick question: Do we know the date already of the fall block party? <laughs> That is an excellent question. I do. I meant to ask Gabrielle that, and I forgot. I do not know the date. Wait, it might be in the notes. Let me check. I don't, I'm not sure that they've named the date. To be totally honest. Yeah, she usually sends stuff out, and I think she would have announced that in the big mailing. But I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss it somewhere. But okay, thanks. <laughs> no, thank. That's a that's a very key question. Um, it was last year it was September fifteenth. Uh, I see that on the town yeah, calendar. I don't. I I'm going to go ahead and guess that no announcements have been made yet. It's it's only April, so. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, All right. Well, that was that was great, y'all. And um, um, just so you guys know that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are in September this year, so um, I would hope that that's taken into account. And picking a date. We noted. Um, we may or may not have, you know, much say in some of that. Those questions. I mean, we'll, we'll just be sort of tacking on. Um, so yeah, I want to move. I want to keep moving because we actually have another fairly heavy-duty piece of discussion, um, and this one actually does require. Um, I don't know some discussion. So, so Eleanor um, was our was our lead writer in writing a grant for the festivals and projects sort of sub-grant that MCC was putting out. Um, and they were extremely delayed in, in getting out their decisions. And I'm not sure, I, I didn't really ask why. Um, we, we only found out about two and a half weeks ago um, that we got the full $2,500 grant for the spring block party. <laughs> so, you know, that's, yeah, that's right. Let's celebrate our our awesomeness, and then, um, but then it create it created some some questions for us. So the the first thing that we asked them obviously was, can we just apply this twenty five hundred to the fall event instead? And the issue came up that this the um, the funds need to be spent by June thirtieth. Now, I I didn't ask. I'm guessing there's there may be some flexibility for events that go on, you know, if you spend your money by June 30th, but the event happens in July or even maybe into August, you know, as long as the money's spent, that's the main thing they need to see. Um, I didn't, I didn't ask how, I didn't ask for great detail on that. So um, that was a little bit disheartening that we couldn't do it for the fall block party. Cause I think that was certainly in the back of my mind last month was that yeah. we might be purpose, but they do have an amendment process. Um, if we can get if we can get the money spent, you know, by June thirtieth, um, they will consider amendments to our original grant, especially considering you know the kind of the good faith nature of what's of what's going on now. So, the question before us tonight, and I do have a couple of of possibilities. The question before us tonight is: What 
what what could happen? How could we spend twenty five hundred on a festival on a project before June thirtieth? Um, and so there's two or three things that that have come to mind. One that I did a little bit further research on. Um, actually, Julianne was the one who suggested it, but um, so so the things that come to mind. Uh, first off, is the ancestral bridges um, Juneteenth event. And so Ancestral Bridges is a nonprofit run by uh, Anika Lopes. We, and we have not, we not spoken to Anika, but I'm just, I'm just telling you that that's a, that is a, an event, a public event that happens the Friday before the Juneteenth weekend. Um, and I don't know how she would use the funds, but that's, you know, that is, that's one idea that came to mind. The other one, which I think is maybe a little bit more um, in line with our charge as a pub public body, is the town's actual Juneteenth celebration itself. Um, and so we, sp or I, I spoke briefly with um, Jennifer Moinston, who is who has coordinated it the past couple of years, done a really nice job. It's a, it's a really fun event um, on the common. And, you know, and kind of asked her if, you know, if, if she wanted, if she were to go in with us on this, what would the, what would the 2,500 get that she doesn't have otherwise? Because, you know, anybody can supplement their budget, but, you know, is, is there an actual value add? And she said that, you know, and I quote, I've always wanted to have a music headliner for this event, like a really high quality headliner. And it's never been in the budget to be able to do that. And she named, and I don't have it in front of me, but she named a, um, a black owned uh, booking company that she's worked with in the past on other events and a couple of the artists that, that might be, you know, candidates within that. So she had it pretty quick, like within, you know, eight hours, because this all happened yesterday, <laughs> you know, within a couple hours, she she had a pretty, I thought, solid idea about how this fund, how these funds could potentially supplement her Juneteenth idea. I'm sorry, her Juneteenth event. Um, so so there's the ancestral bridges, there's the town Juneteenth on the common. And then the other thing that we, that Julianne and I kind of thought about, talked about is the town through the bid puts on a summer music series. A it is a very nice series um, that involves, um, I actually have the, the artists um, that involves, uh, let's see, the tentative artists are the UMass Jazz Faculty and All-Stars, uh, Mr. G, Don and LaPerrin Band, uh, which is a Van Morrison tribute band, pretty fun. And then Naomi Nye, um, and so that runs July, Friday's end of July into the middle middle of August. Um, so another, you know, kind of really worthwhile public festival project type event that the town's putting on. Um, it it's running far enough into August that it makes me a little a little wary. I, I I'm pretty sure we could get the funds out by June 30th, but that that's running a little bit longer than than I'm totally comfortable with. Um, but anyway, I, I want to do a little bit of research and bring you a few options. This is open for discussion. That's not, those are not in any in any way restricted. You know, those aren't the only options. Those are just a few things that Julianne and I thought about in, you know, literally a 20 minute conversation yesterday. Um, and one last thing, I'm sorry, one last thing, no guarantees. No guarantees that, that MCC approves any of this. So I just wanna put that out there too. Sorry, sorry, go, go ahead, Robin. Um, so we're sure that the money needs to be spent by June 30th, but the event doesn't necessarily have to happen by yes, June 30th? That's right. Yep. Okay. So an MCC has to approve of it or it's just given to us and we have to approve of it. So this okay. is this is the festivals and projects competitive grant right. that we applied for. So this would be an amendment similar to us, you know, it's an amendment request to our grant. All right. So what would we how would this grant be applied to the summer the town summer series? I mean, by like adding another act or two on different dates and the ancestral bridges, um, that's actually not a lot of money for a headline act, but it's a lot more probably than they can afford. So, you know, if she thinks that can happen, I mean, headline acts get like, you know, $30,000, $50,000, I mean, even folkies. So, um, so it's our little thing, but it could bring in, you know, more than someone who they couldn't previously afford to present to us. Um, so does it have to go all to 
performance or can some of it go to um, you know, a little children's stage or storytelling stage or things like that? Or does it have to be the like, performance? It's a festival. No, so I, I, think, I, I think we, um, you know, we could have a discussion. I mean, this is, this is literally an application that we're going to make into the state. And, you know, there, there may be a, a back and forth <laughs> process a little bit in terms of, you know, what the most appropriate thing to do is, uh, you know, if, if we, if we came to them and said, can we supplement, you know, ancestral bridges, uh, you know, they might say, uh, that's not such a great use, but why don't you try that? Like, there may be some back and forth. I, I couldn't tell you. I honestly have no idea. Um, yeah, please, Julianne. Yeah, I'd say, you know, at this point, we can pat ourselves on the backs for getting the money and, you know, unforeseen circumstances is not going to be used as intended. So now kind of our responsibility here is, in my opinion, to, you know, do our best to make sure we put together a proposal for the amendment um, that means that the money will go to the community in Amherst for culture. And, you know, I have some some concerns. I, I, Coyote, I see you're raising your hand too, I think, right? I have some concerns as far as um, there's there's what we would like to do, but I think we've got a real urgent and short-term opportunity to make an attempt to have these funds stay with the town. And I think that we kind of have to put some of um, our personal preferences and desires aside and really look at this a little bit more strategically than we normally would to really kind of get an amendment that's just clear and simple and, and it's easy for them to keep this money here in our community and to support something you know meaningful and of value to the, to the community too. Um, yeah, I really like the Juneteenth so that, you know, I feel a headline performances have at the drink, which most, I believe, or take it in this will be a, oh, in the open free events. So it'd be nice to see a significant name in a place where you don't have to pay. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Cody. Um, I appreciate you saying that. And the other thing is that this is a true open public event. You know, as you said, it's a it's a true. Fe I mean, it is a true festival. So I think to Julianne's point about sort of the cleanness um, and just you know keeping it straightforward. And yeah, I mean, you know, being strategic with the state too, and just sort of giving them a very straightforward thing to say. You know, do you support um, Juneteenth celebration on the Amherstown Common? Yay or nay? I mean, it's not that simple, but but on some level, it's it's that simple, and it's it's a a straight line cultural aspect to it. Um, you know, I think that that might be our 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 best bet. But again, there's no guarantees. I mean, if only we knew somebody who had some some sway with. No, just kidding, just kidding. We would never never put you on the spot like that, Mindy. Um, they want to <laughs> support this. I mean, unless there's something really off. Go go ahead, Mindy. They're going to support it. Uh, Mindy, are you muted? Um, I don't think so. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I think actually, yeah, you should absolutely use me. And um, I'll also reach out to Senator Comerford. This is the kind of thing, even without me being in this position as being chair of the committee, this is part of what we do is, if I mean, you've learned at the last minute that a festival that you had planned to use the funds for has been canceled. They were late getting the money. That's another piece of it. And if you can come up with an alternative way to spend the funds so that they don't have to be reverted, I'm all for that. I think you may want to clarify though, if they can be used for something that happens after the fiscal year. I'm not sure with the festival money, if it's something that has to happen in this fiscal year. I just would be concerned about that. And I also wouldn't want 
to, I want to also make sure that we got assurances that whatever happens with this funds and an amendment doesn't sort of um, put you at a disadvantage potentially for getting a festival grant next year um, when the spring black party returns. Um, I don't think it would, but I think I just want to have that conversation with the council and make sure. But I won't do anything until you reach out to me. So if you're going to be in conversations with them, you can certainly say we've talked to Rep Dom. She's aware of this. She's supportive. And she's more than happy to give you a call to communicate that support should you need it or in any other way that would be good for them. Um, and I can also mention it to them when I see them. And in the new position, I happen to speak to them much more often than I did before. So there'll be an opportunity for me to sort of put a good word in for Amherst's efforts to repurpose the funds. But I love the idea of using something that's happening so you don't have to organize it basically. And then um, making sure that the funds get used to sort of extend that experience. That's a, that's a lovely thing, lovely part, community partnership going on. Thanks for letting me speak. Thank you. I really appreciate that support, Mindy. And, and we absolutely will pull you in on, on the discussion. Yeah. And if you need me, I don't want to, I don't want to write anything off. Like if you're like, I, boy, I wish you'd write a letter of support for it. Let me know. And I will. Um, if it's a phone call and a conversation, I'll do that. If you're not sure, I'll call them and figure out what's the best way for me to show support. That's awesome. Uh, I think Eleanor was first and then Cody. Yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. Um, I, I do have to run off and tour that student, but I just want to say I really agree. I think this would be a very effective use of our money, um, especially that that person you've been in contact with kind of thinks that this will be a way for them to get a headliner. I would just feel really good about our money going towards that. Um, and yeah, I, I do have to run, but I would be happy to help with any amending or anything that's needed there. So thank you, everyone. And thank you so much, Wendy. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Bye. Uh, Cody. Um, I was actually thinking the same night. Mindy brings up a good point about collaborating with someone who already has a event plan since we do have well we might have June first deadline unless we get we go and just will stay away from Creating our own bit with such short amount of time. Yeah, what that's one more advantage to the Juneteenth also is it's it's you know get that's a couple of weeks ahead of June thirtieth, so yeah. that gives us a little bit of headroom there as well, just in, just in case that is an issue. So. We can, yeah, Rachel, please go ahead. Oh, thanks. Thanks to all of you for, for thinking that through and doing the um, research on that. And I, I think th that's a great idea, what you're proposing with the um, adding to the Juneteenth public event. And um, also it, it does, it, it fits in with a, a festival um, theme, right, for the, for the grant itself, because I would be curious to see how the MCC responds to what's considered an amendment versus basically a whole new kind of project, right? So so I'd be um, really curious to, to, to find out what their reply would be. So thank you for keeping us all posted. That's all. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think it's, you know, um, it, my, my, my gut tells me just having talked to a few people that it's probably our our best shot and it's no guarantee and but I, I do think that you know we will we'll ask rep dom to help us you know kind of with the with the messaging we'll make sure that we message the fact that you know these are events that are outside of our control right i mean in terms of the spring block party um it was i mean we we got notice of this 
money um, in mid-March with a June 30th spending deadline. And that's, you know, so you really got to glom onto something with, with, you know, with, with two and a half months. I mean, you really can't get something up and running in, in that period of time. So um, I think we should probably, un unless there's further discussion, we should probably take a motion on it. No, Do just, we... just a simple thing, Matt, which is, I think, I think you already have some of the answers about that Mindy brought up circling back to the fiscal year and whether it could be used after June 30th. And I, I think that was a, a pretty clear no um, with the festival grants. So we really are, you know, um, limited as far as I understand it to, to support something, you know, um, that, that meets that deadline. Uh, and again, as far as being strategic and clean about this, um, going to feel like we only really maybe have one shot at this. So trying to, you know, uh, push those limits might, might mean, you know, not being able to retain those funds versus something mm -hmm. that's within their, their, um, requirements. Oh, Indeed. Mindy has her hand up again. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I also think <clears throat> the MCC is very deeply committed to equity and supporting BIPOC artists and creatives. And this gives the Cultural Council through the June 9th, Juneteenth um, events an opportunity to sort of um, like demonstrate a shared commitment with the MCC. I think it'll be a very easy amendment to go through as a result. I'm not sure if Jen or the town were calling it a Juneteenth, the Amherst Juneteenth Festival, but if they did, that would be a beautiful thing because then no matter what it is, it's being called, then it's being called what the MCC is looking to fund, right? And we know it will also meet the activities and the events piece but they'll they'll sort of be ahead of that curve with that. So I I I think great job, really, really good job in trying to spend money quickly, which is which is surprisingly not always easy to do. Maybe we oh just God. add you know festival headliner, <laughs> right? Exactly. Festival in our, exactly. in our request. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I love that. <laughs> um, Thank you. Want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. A second. Okay. So the motion on the table is to uh, work with um, Jen Moinston and Pamela Nolan, Nolan Young is uh, the DEI director. Work with work with them to submit an amendment to MCC, changing our festivals and projects grant from the spring block party to the Juneteenth festival headliner in downtown Amherst, Massachusetts. Um, Wait, do we know that Annika wants agrees to that? I mean, I don't know why she wouldn't, but nevertheless, you have spoken to her about it. No, so so I'm and I'm sorry, I've, I I might have gone through quickly through that. So so Annika is running her nonprofit is running a a different um, Juneteenth event on Friday night before that weekend, and I I have not spoken to her. Honestly, because it's it's been 24 hours since I learned that we could do an amendment, and I, I just sort of, she she her her um, hers is a very interesting and educational event that has to do with um, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do it justice, but it's it's a very informational educational event around um, the lineage of Civil War you know African American Civil War soldiers in Amherst. Um, to the present day, it has to do with the tablets that are in the bank center. Um, oh. It's but it it is not directly linked to the town's event. And you know, as as I thought about it and talked to Julianne, it it seemed to me that something that the town itself is you know is legitimately the lead agency on is a more appropriate thing for us to put our energy behind, just because we're a town body. I think we need a sure thing in the in the credibility now that we're asking for an amendment at, at this point. And this is where I was saying, like, we tried to split it between two and the other event you're talking about sounds less festival driven, but I'd have to familiarize myself. I think we just have to act differently here in the interest of, of being sure that the, the funds benefit the community. Um, so I su fully support what Matt's saying, that we we work with the, the town specifically. Um, in this case. 
you could be um, less specific if you weren't sure about the headliner and the music piece and just say to support um, arts and cultural activities as part of the town of Amherst Juneteenth festivities or something. And you could probably work with the MCC to talk about that it has that it, like give yourself a deadline of when to tell them what it will be applied to specifically, but for the purposes of the amendment, keep it vague. Yeah, be, well, to that to that point, I, I think we'll have at least one more conversation with Jen before we submit it, just to make sure that she's got the numbers right for you know th that this money will in fact allow her to do what she wants to. I think I think personally, if we if we can commit to a performing artist, a black performing artist, we should. But I take the point that you know if we can't, we we won't. So I think we have a motion on the table from Rachel. Is that right? I'm sorry. I, and then did Cody second it? I saw somebody's hand raised. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So why don't we do a roll call unless there's further discussion? And I'll start with Christy. Yes. Julianne. Yes. Leah. Yes. Robin. Yes. And I am a yes as well. So that is seven. Seven. We're still at seven. Okay. All right. Were we, were we up to eight before, and I missed it. Okay. Um, member. Sure. Um, so yeah. that's a that's a unit. That's a unanimous vote. We're we're good. We're good. Um, that's the okay. unanimous vote to move okay. on that. Rob, we're good on the count. We're <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just looking myself. <laughs> um, okay. So I think that's down. that's wonderful. I'm I'm excited to to move that forward and. You know, we'll we'll have a conversation with with MCC, and we'll bring in Rep. Dom when the when the time feels right, and certainly before it's you know before it's finally submitted. Um, so I want to pass it over now because there are still a couple more items, and it's getting close to seven. Um, we have a grants update item, and Julianne has just been amazingly organized in managing a lot of this grant process. One piece that newer members may or may not so for sort of standard amendment requests where a grantee has got a grant and they want to change their venue or they want to change their date. Um, it used to be that we had to put that up to a vote every time. MCC has relaxed that. And so now it only takes two of us. Any two counselors can approve a request to amend a grant. But Julianne, correct me if I'm wrong, has at least one, maybe two that are sort of more significant amendments that that you wanted to bring to the larger council. Is that is that right? Yeah, there are three grant amendments out there. Um, one of them is um, uh, one that you and I have have agreed is a is a simple change, and that is um, for the uh, is that Hampshire Young People's Choir, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they. Uh, have a, a change of, of venue um, so that they can have uh, an acoustically better performance. Um, and we've agreed that it's it's fine. They're actually moving it out of Amherst um, to uh, a venue in South Hadley, the All Saints Episcopal Church. And um, and yet it's still a concert that includes, you know, the vast majority are uh, Amherst residents, uh, they rehearse in Amherst, and uh, they've also noted that they'll be bringing their spring choir uh, May 7th. Uh, wait, I've got it. I'm trying to go through this quickly. It's it's a different event um, that will be in Amherst. Um, so we've, we've agreed that because this is a, a better uh, location for them to perform that uh, we'll accept their amendment. That's one. I just emailed another. Uh, this one is a bit more involved. I don't, I'm not sure if I can share my screen, but I did email it to all of you. Let me see if it will let me. Um, is this the one you just sent through? I just Julia? sent. So this one is um, from Wildwood School for a fiscal year 2022 project. Um, that was supposed to have been completed, you know, by by the end of 2022. Uh, the the gist of what's changed is, you know, we only partially funded this uh, event or or project, I should say, 
and uh, the principal of the school kind of pushed this back onto uh, the, the PGO and the community and said that they needed to do fundraising uh, to, to bring this to fruition. So uh, in general, the, the project stalled and was not able to be completed. It's, it's also a little bit complicated as far as how it's being managed. So while the applicant is Wildwood Elementary School, um, we had the actual named applicant uh, retired during uh, trying to have this project come to fruition and a new volunteer came forward who's a parent volunteering to do this, uh, both to do the fundraising and to administer the grant. So it's been, you know, pr pretty complicated and I'm, you know, sensitive to uh, how challenging that is for the school, but at this point, uh, they're saying that the, the funding has come in and they're ready to do this, uh, but they still very much need uh, the $700 direct grant that was provided to them. They need to hold on to that to be able to, to bring this to fruition and, and, and actually complete the project. Um, given how, how late it is, you know, when Matt and I just discussed it, we felt that it was only fair to, to present this and to officially um, bring this to a vote. Uh, does, does anyone have any questions about what I've said so far, anything you've read here? So are we confident that they will be able to, that they will put this production on or whatever it is that it, it's going to happen? Because um, I understand, you know, personnel changing and all of that kind of thing. It's just pretty late. Yeah, I'd, I'd say considering um, that the PGO and the school raised 4,000 additional dollars towards this and that they have the mm -hmm. money in hand and uh, if they can continue to have our funds that uh, they, they can do this. Um, they're still under the same oversight as any grantee where they have to do the final grant report and, and you know, technically we can still recall these funds for them if, if they don't complete the amended event um, as, as they've committed to. And when is it going to be? I'm seeing when it was supposed to. Is it going to be, oh wait, we're kind of in the spring already. It's going to happen this year, this school year, or they don't know? Um, they don't know because they would need our, our money to do this. So they would only go forward with it with the money. So they're waiting on, on us to be able to go forward. Okay. And if they go forward with it, is it going to happen this spring? Or are they talking about going into the fall? They're, they're talking about doing it during 2023. And, and honestly, going back to their original grant, which I don't have up on screen, they actually listed it happening in 2022 and 2023 to begin with. So to some extent, we should have clarified uh, during the fiscal year 2022 grant cycle uh, that it didn't meet the guidelines of being done uh, by December 31st, 2022. So in some sense, based on what they were asking for, they're more on schedule than, um, than we're giving them credit for because we had a deadline and we didn't communicate to them that their 2023 part of that uh, couldn't be included. So I think it's, it's, it's all in good faith. It's... Uh, and I like that they make the point too that you know while the children at Wild <coughs> School benefit, it's also one of the playgrounds that you know outside of school hours a lot of the community goes to, and 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 it's kind of cool to have the outdoor instruments um, as as part of this and to to bring a, a different kind of play and creativity to a playground. We liked it. Hmm? Yeah. Was one of the reasons we liked the project. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the proposal is to approve the extension of the use of the grant? Yes, if somebody would like to, to motion for that. Okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. I, as I said, so moved. Um, I'll second that. Any further discussion? OK. 
we can move to the vote. Given that Rach, uh, Julian's dogs are going to be voting, I'll call the roll call. Yeah, yeah Ida seems to agree. <laughs> uh, Christy? Yes, good. Cody? Aye. Leah? <coughs> yes. Rachel? Yes. And Julianne? Yes, and I'm going to go plug in my computer before I crash here. All right, sorry about the dogs. No um, and just to clarify, the first grant amendment was at the Hampshire Young People's Choir? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, but we didn't need to vote on that. It was just a simple yeah. change of the venue. I just wanted to yeah. make sure I have that. And then to, to wrap up the whole grant update, there is one more fiscal year 2022 grant um, that will be bringing an amendment, uh, uh, should be in May. Uh, which is to uh, repurpose uh, funds for, let me look at it, uh, and I, I, I don't have all the details, so we really can't discuss it now, but it's the African Heritage Reparations Assembly uh, had, had an award for $500 in fiscal year 2022, and um, they were not able to complete their project uh, as they had intended. Uh, but the work has gone forward, and we'll have more details as to what they're requesting next month. And the overall grants update then is that um, we have received uh, either communication about extending grants uh, or final grant reports uh, and documentation. At this point, uh, we, we literally have something for every single fiscal year 2022 grantee. There are a couple where I'm still chasing down, uh, you know, a receipt here or there. But uh, as far as the, the direct granting, it's been a huge success, uh, and and uh, we've been able to to really do a great job documenting all of that for fiscal year 2023. Uh, we have processed the paperwork um, for the direct grants for all but two grantees at this point. And the amount that uh, is left over for those grantees who have, have not accepted their grant awards uh, comes to $425 out of the uh, 61983 that we awarded. So. Huh. Yeah, and you know, so much credit to Robin for setting things up and, and Julianne really for okay. keeping this incredibly organized this year. So thank you. Thank you both very much. Um, okay, so we are at our um, final item, which is new business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance. And I will go ahead. Oh, Rachel, please go ahead. Sorry, um, do you want to finish? I just had a quick question, especially since Mindy's with us today um, about business items that I thought of. Um, so do you want to finish what you're saying? And then I'll ask my quick question, if that's okay. Go ahead. No, just go ahead. Okay, so I was reading the, um, the most recent update that MCC sent out to everyone. And among the items was something that was, uh, it was a community input survey. Was reference sample survey of to for LCCs to poll the local community to see what they would like to see grants. Mm -hmm. Can you also hear me? Okay, because they're you're, all, you're really um, breaking up. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. Yeah, so you're breaking up. Rubber band to that's see work. if that's something we're interested in doing too. Okay, um, sorry about that, but I personally think that that might be something worth investigating for us um, as an LCC. And if you all agree, then are there you know strategic ways to, to accomplish this? Because I'm happy to work on it if that's something we like to do. So that, that's all I want to raise. Yeah, I appreciate that, Rachel. I think in past years we have, um... We have approached that in terms of the public meeting as a as a time to get input from our community, um, and you know obviously public comment in our meetings. But 
I think it's a good idea to be more methodical and systematic. And I would recommend, you know, if this is something that, and it sounds like you are sort of volunteering and interested in, if you want to um, gather the materials and maybe, you know, for our main meeting, just come with, come with a proposal for, for how you'd like to go about, go about it. I, I never think that, I always think more public input is better um, as, as a general rule and particularly capturing, you know, historically disadvantaged, you know, diverse communities. I mean, I think that's, that is definitely within something, something we need to always continue to work on. So I guess this isn't, uh, I, this is just an, an encouragement and, a, and a, um, you know, my gratitude that you brought it up. Uh, I definitely think we can always improve on that, on that practice. Thank you. And I also um, would probably want to consult Mindy too about ways to distribute such a survey were we to launch one, because I think there are ways to put it in front of more people to get more potential responses. So that's that's the other thing, the reason I'm raising it today, but I'll definitely look into that. And if anyone else wants to work with me on that, please let me know. And thank, thank you. Thank you. If, if I can just say also, I think the town is currently in um, actively seeking participation in a survey they're doing on solar issues. And so the town may also, we may want to, you may want to consult with the folks in town as to how they go about doing a survey for a townwide issue, because it seems to me like they have got it down. I think this is the second survey that they've done, or maybe even more. And I'm also happy to help in any way, either contributing ideas or checking with Mass Cultural to find out how other communities have done it. Um, maybe there are some best practices to learn from around that. Yeah. I think uh, in addition, in addition, you know, Brianna Sunrind in, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the town manager's office would be your, your main point of contact for really figuring that out for, with the town. And actually, you know, we're going to be working with Jennifer Moynston and she has a very good touch uh, mm -hmm. in terms of knowing this community very well. So she might be a good partner for that as well, Rachel. So I think, I think if you want to just kind of do a little bit of research on the instrument in terms of what, you know, what survey what what survey you, you would like to send out and then let's 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 put it on the agenda and let's let's give it some time in may and, and really you know some time and some thought in may yeah, thanks for bringing great i'll start with the samples that they sent out for from other policies great all right so uh julia i'm gonna i'm gonna recuse myself now and you can pick up where you left off because i think we're at our 48 uh, not reasonably anticipated 48 mm -hmm. hours in advance of the meeting um sections okay thank you so um yes yeah, and and thanks so much um for uh george for for coming today and and uh bringing this to to us um we're, we're all i'm sure very very aware and i'd like to follow up and uh make a a, a motion that uh the cultural council form, you know, a uh, official, what would you call it, position about the uh, vote for the school project and the importance to the community and um, vote to come out uh, in, in favor of it or, or not and, and to uh, make our position clear uh, to, to guide this community. Does anyone second that? Yeah, I second that motion. Okay. I, uh, I do have one other concern. My always concern is- Whoa, 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 whoa. Let oh, me, no, I'd like no. to open it up to, okay. to deliberation and, and discussion um, to the council. So Robin, did you have something oh, you wanna- we were running, Yeah, sorry, I thought we were already running. Uh, just my usual concern that, because I don't, know what the plans are or anything like that with the school that you know it'd be accessible much more so than since it's going to be new things built that it'd be accessible and that means more than just a ramp for a wheelchair um i would have to guess that the the new school hopefully. plan is is you know uh a level of accessibility that that you know, it would cost exponentially more to even attempt to do 
at the present uh, locations. So uh, that that is actually, from my perspective, a, a, a ringing endorsement for for why the schools needs to go forward for the, the the benefit that everybody can participate in in learning in culture. Um, I mean, if if we actually had to do a run through of the accessibility issues we have for our grantees when hosting uh, yeah. events at the at the current locations, um, it's kind of, in my opinion, embarrassing that a town like Amherst would would have the challenges that we have right now. So yeah. we can do better. And perhaps Cody and Leah, who have spent time in all of these schools, can mm -hmm. can speak to to this even more so. So you're saying you, because I have not read plans or anything, you believe this school project will increase mm. accessibility. Mm. Thank you. Uh. Sorry, Cody, we lost you. You're muted. I will imagine it will be for the accessible. Um, I don't see it not being special while, which is how what I feel outdated. Thank you, Cody. Leah, do you have anything to add as you know, somebody who's been you know, in the schools and, and aware of the accessibility needs of you know, other students in the community? And um... Um, So I've actually, I went to um, elementary school. Um, my dad works at Smith College, so I went to the lab school at Smith College. So I never um, really experienced the Amherst um, elementary school systems. But as someone who's been, especially at the middle school, there is definitely, I've noticed like infrastructure issues with like ceiling leaks. And um, I mean, right now there's a lot of, um, we're at the high school, we're like severely understaffed. Um, and I think there is a lot of like connections between, there's a lot of moving parts in the school systems that don't work. And I think when you look at like, a child going from preschool through um, senior year and you look at all those things together, I think it, um, I think those things add up and I think it's like really important to prioritize yeah. education. Yeah, and as someone who, you know, I, um, my son was uh, attended at different times, both Wildwood and then Fort River. And I think it's important to remember how conceptual these these buildings were and and you know they believe them to be forward thinking and modern but they're also uh, at this point ancient and um they it, it's been very challenging to take care of students and you know i understand um over the years you know with with fort river and um the the problems with the site you know that there's actually been you know, moisture, perhaps contributing to mold and terrible conditions. So beyond even being accessible, you know, you, you have buildings that can compromise the health of the students in them and cause issues. And like, this is, this to me is something that just cannot be. Um, so I, I think in, in, in good faith, I, I have to trust that those that are planning the new buildings, um, you know, have the best interest of the of the community uh, in in mind in a, in, a, in a modern and forward thinking way, and that this is something that's we all know is long overdue. Um, any other concerns? Julia, about can I? Can I? Yes, please. Sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand while I'm driving. Um, can I just ask a, a broader question, which is why why is this committee voting on this? And how does voting in support or against the new school relate to what our brief is as the cultural committee? Sure, Christy. I think we might have touched on that earlier, but I'll. I'll oh, sorry. Sorry. 
No, 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 it's fine. I'm happy to, uh, I, I, we really didn't get into it actually, but from, th there are several different facets here as far as our, our charter with the cultural council to promote arts and culture, right? And that can, it's, it's many different things. So one, uh, it's simply a, a venue thing. Many of our grantees use these venues. So Robin's uh, comment about making sure it's accessible, it's important for students, but it's also important from the point of view that uh, the community who's renting out the new space, uh, that, it, that it meets our guidelines, for instance. Um, it's also just a huge challenge uh, to have spaces to for, for grantees. So uh, more space certainly benefits the community. But further to that, you know, these schools are the incubators of, of art and culture for the future of Amherst. So the end result is um, we take a position and we, you know, we'll have to vote to see where we are with this to either you know, support this, um, come out against it because we have real concerns that, you know, it's not viable uh, or um, perhaps have, have no comment um, if folks feel strongly enough to, to go on the record one way or the other. But as, as someone, okay. was, you know, I could say that, it, you know, I have had children in Amherst schools and the reality is with my youngest being a sophomore by the time any of these schools are a reality, you know, I, I, I won't directly benefit, but I feel so passionate about it, having uh, seen what the community is, is dealing with um, and, and just really believing that we can do so much better and that it's time to move forward. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And and with that, Christy, does it does it make sense to you now to, that that the council would um, you know, the kind, position? kind of. I mean, it would make a lot more. And you know, I, I I'm asking the question not having done any of the work. It would if I knew like what percentage of our grantees use the school. Like, are we talking ten percent, fifty percent? You know, yeah. there's there's so that's an issue like you know it's it's one thing to sort of say it generally but if there's actually data to say that this is affecting not just sort of anecdotal but but real numbers i mean that's one concern i you know i I've, I've been out of, out of the country for a lot for several months so i'm not as up to date as let's say my husband is who's been following this closely um you know i do have I mean, architecturally, I have real concerns because, you know, it is always less sustainable to build new than it is to renovate. Um, so I just don't know about that. And in terms of, um, you know, th those issues, I guess I'm just, I, I think if we, I, if I were to vote yes to support this as a member of this committee, not as, hmm citizen of Amherst, I would really want to know why we think in very, you know, and if I assume we would do some kind of a statement, not just, I don't know, not just, oh, the Cultural Council supports this, to mm -hmm. be able to sort of um, put some teeth into it about why we think it's better. Um, Sure. That really relate to what our brief is as a committee. That's that's my question, and I, you know, and I'm totally unable to help with this on any level. So I'm just looking to hear more about, yeah, why yeah. We, why people think this is going to be so important for yeah, and, for the culture and the arts in Amherst. And and to that end, because this is not something that was on the agenda, um, but was brought to us by the community. Uh, certainly, uh, the, that preparatory work uh, hasn't occurred. I, you know, am not um, necessarily following this day to day. I'm following it myself more from a, you know, anecdotal, qualitative point of view and from my my personal experience. I, I can say that you know I, I did review documents sometime back about the renovate versus uh, new build here. And uh, that to me was was pretty clear, especially when you look at the 
the uh, environmental site issues with Fort River that, uh, you know, renovating on a, on a site that is actually part of the, the problem that's causing the building to deteriorate is, is right. it, it, I, I don't know, what do you want to do? Put the school up on, um, on uh, uh, posts no, or, no, I mean, <laughs> you know, like you, it, I mean, it really I, in this and case. I remember, and I remember all that too. Yes. I guess what yeah. I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is that I think and I don't know, maybe people feel differently, but I think if we if we come out with a statement about why we're in support of it, then it should be speaking in our I want would want to speak in my position as a member of a committee, not, you know, so that because we're on the committee, because we have an interest in the arts and culture. So why is this new school better? You know, is it better for me? I guess I'm just, if we draft something, I would okay. be happy yeah. to work on that language. Um, I think I have something for, for that. But before I, um, I, I well, I want to say that so I don't forget, because, but Leah and Cody have their their hands raised and if I had to sum up what what I might suggest we work around with that is that um, as the cultural council, we are as committed to ensuring um, active participation in arts and culture today, as we are in the future of arts and culture in this community and that the new schools support the ability to have uh, a place for arts and culture to happen for all ages. Uh, as soon as they are online and available for use, but in a, in a deeper sense, uh, they they protect that people have a space to learn about arts and culture. Right right now, you know, folks don't necessarily even want to be in these buildings that that they're in. Um, it's a pretty sad estate, sadly, you know, when when you you go to a a, a parent night as to you know, I, and I've moved all over. So compared to state of the art facilities where uh, other communities have taken care of making sure that they they have uh, quality um, facilities for their students, sadly we have not. Uh, Leia, um, kind of speaking. Um, I know that this is kind of like a hot topic issue in Amherst right now. So I feel like maybe it might be helpful. And I feel like a lot of what I'm like hearing is there's like on both sides of the debate, there's like, well, it's more environmentally sound to keep it because of this. And then like, it's more environmentally sound to keep it because of this. And there's like a lot of back and forth with both things kind of citing the same things as why one should be which way. So I feel like it might be beneficial to instead of voting on it in this meeting, maybe taking time, maybe like if someone wants to find um, documents written by people like to review kind of um, the expert opinions of this and then use that in our citations of why this affects arts and culture or if we think it doesn't. So to kind of use and cite this data um and i think that could be helpful for making a point for this is why it is so important to the arts community is because like we have this but i think it might be helpful to take more time to kind of come to those conclusions because i think there's a lot being thrown around right now and i think this is something that's important to like um really think about thank you um matt you rejoined us I, I want to stay recused. I just want to make a clarifying comment. I, Cody was next, but just just clarify it. I'm going to step back out again. But um, George's ask to us was to um, make an endorsement, non-endorsement, and and you know I think drafting a statement, as Christy said, that that's sort of beyond what he was he was asking us for. He was he was asking for us to just you know yay or nay endorse, and and I think you know that endorsement to to Christy's point from us would be on cultural grounds, right? So it's not a question of us reviewing the the project and, and <clears throat> you know, a balance or a, a comprehensive position on the project, but just from our from our mandate, from our purview of promoting arts and arts and culture, you know, do we or do we not want to endorse the project? And and really, you know, it, it would just simply be, you know, the, the cultural council endorses and and our name, you know, our council's name can be added to the list 
of endorsing bodies for this for this project. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to back back out. I want to say recused, but I just want to clarify George's ask this, yeah. uh, earlier this meeting. And and we really do have a finite time as far as um, as you know the the polls will be open to go in person on May second, but mm -hmm. uh, those who uh, are I guess early voting, you know that that's happening even sooner. Uh, yes, Cody. And so, I mean that to how many people were use the facility that it, it will give people more of a those that need an indoor space more of a option versus what is out there. So I also is a school assembly so they do have performances in their fullness. Oh, so I want us to also think about that, not just a concert on Friday night in the so, yeah, thank, thank you, Cody. That's at the most basic level, just being sure that there are spaces for the community to to perform and the schools serve that that purpose and and yet uh, the performance spaces uh, available today. Uh, you know, our, our, our substandard with the, the schools that the community would go into, and this will definitely improve it. And this is a responsibility that we have to our grantees. Yes, Robin. Well, all those arguments can be applied to whether we support a library project or not, I think more appropriately. And I don't think that's something we should be voting on. I mean, yes, it would give more, I mean, us saying we support more venues, more space, uh, appropriate spaces, all of that is one thing, but this is a very, I mean, this issue has been going on for years and years, and there are so many factors. Um, and it isn't primarily about venue spaces, it's primarily about having um, appropriate environment for kids to learn and teachers to teach in. Um, so I aim back to, I don't think it's something we should be voting on or supporting or not supporting. Um, I just don't see that as our venue. I think we need to be more neutral. So, so would you vote against it though? I would probably abstain. But I wouldn't vote for us so endorsing it because I just don't think that's our role. And I think it's way too complicated um, issues. I don't even know that I'm voting because I don't have kids. I mean, we all have skin in the game because, you know, it's our community and kids being well educated affects all of us but I don't have the kind of skin in the game that people who have um, kids or, or work in those schools have. And it's so complicated. I'm not sure I feel like I could really make a good vote on it, you know, make a real decision. You and know, it's interesting, Robin, that of all of the council members here um, potentially voting out of, out of the five of us, in a sense, none of us have skin in the game at all. Leia is graduating. Cody's in college. My kids won't benefit from it. Uh, Christy's not. Yeah. 
but I, I think that from that perspective, um, it, it means that um, it, it's, it's cleaner. It's, it's, there, there isn't any conflict of interest. It's, you know, so our position here uh, and the intent and the, the net benefit that it brings to the community and to the future of this community uh, is unquestionable from my perspective with that. Oh, I agree. I just don't, I don't know that that's really the purview of what this council should be doing. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, it's just, George just presented it. Have we ever endorsed or, or unendorsed un, or been against endorsing anything else that is, you know, that's so political um, that comes to a vote? Because it's a really, it may not be as divisive as the library project, but it's still a pretty divisive. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lara, do you have a record of who seconded the vote? I, sorry, you're muted. Yes, I think I seconded the vote. Okay, all right. Um, I would say that we, like many groups, could talk about this all night, but we brought the yep. motion forward and, and we should give it an, an up or down vote uh, and, and bring it to a conclusion this, this evening with that. Um, yeah, but and I think the motion, do. I don't think, I think the motion was to form a stance on it, but I don't think we said, I think, do we have to vote whether we should form a stance and then we need to vote whether we shouldn't form a, and then we should vote, or we vote whether we should form a stance and then we vote what the stance would be? No, I think my, my, we'd have to run it back after we get the recording, but certainly my intent was to vote on taking a vote from the council members to determine whether by vote we are uh in in favor or not not to form not to form a stance i i would what matt joined a moment ago to to say that um the intent here is is just to you know as a council overall do we support this is it an up or down and then what do we do with that support just it's a matter of public record at that point there isn't necessarily anything that we have okay. to do with it you know we we met there's a a, a transcript will be in the, in the meeting minutes um okay and that would be the the end okay. of it i mean i am it is to robin's point about like if we do choose to have a stance on it i guess there is kind of the question of like, where do we draw the line between things? And I guess I just don't know enough about um, yeah. kind of what that would mean going forward. So, so Leah, as the person who seconded this, are you withdrawing your support and you, you no longer second it? Yeah. She's Wait. all discussing it, hmm? I think. I think she's second discussing it, not necessarily I mean, you you can kind of uh, re remove your su support from it. Wait, I mean, wait a minute, Julian. I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I thought that we're we we were having a discussion. That's what Leia seconded. We have we're having a discussion, and then either we're going either we're going to vote to take a stand that's one option or we can vote to support or not support i mean i don't know which way you know you're running the meeting so i don't know which way you want it to go i mean i think it's good to discuss it but i think there's real questions about whether we should now even be voting on this okay well yeah matt you've returned my my intent was just to have folks vote in favor or not, or not after discussion. Yes, Matt. Yeah, again, I was, I'm not trying to weigh in on the actual deliberation, but just to clarify, the motion was to endorse the project. And, and you know, and, and anybody can make a motion like that at any time, particularly when, you know, a public, somebody comes in and, and, and asks for it. So I, I you know, I, but, but, but that's why it's, it's sometimes it's good to make a motion, second it, and then have a discussion about it, you know, because it frame it frames the what are we what are we actually doing here? You know, it, what we're doing here is deciding whether or not uh, we want to endorse this this project. That's you know, but I, so I just want to make that procedural point, and then I will step back out. 
Yeah, because I was trying to say, I feel like personally, this is something that I endorse. Like, I want to support this, like, as a town member, but I guess other people are raising questions about whether it is appropriate for the council to make endorsements. And I guess I just, like, I feel like I just don't know enough about, like, the history of making endorsements before and kind of what that means. Like, do we... Because I, I do think there is a lot at stake with when there are school systems with problems. I think the arts programs are some of the first things to go. I know I gave, I supported a movement. I think it was like about, um, it's something about budget cuts. And it's like when things are being cut and when money's being lost, a lot of arts and culture is taken from schools. So I think there is that aspect to it. And I think they're also the venue aspect is really important, but. Um, I, th I think it's a matter really of kind of voting. I don't want to say voting your conscious, but voting, voting your intent as you see it as to whether it benefits the, the community or not. And keeping in mind, you know, our commitment here to ensure that you know art and culture is uh something that is strong within the community and for myself i you know i i i don't see any ways in which this takes away from arts and culture at all i i i see so many benefits but uh, julian i'm sorry can i just hmm, i yes. i um I am totally voting for the new school as a citizen. Mm -hmm. There is no question in my mind. I do not feel as I, nobody has made the case tonight that is saying to me that I think that as a member of this committee, this is what we should be weighing in on. I mean, yeah, it would be, it's, there's a, a, it would be great to have more venues for the arts. But that doesn't necessarily mean that as a member of the committee, I would vote for the school. It has nothing to do with what I, you know, I mean, I just want to push back a little bit when you say vote your conscience. Because no, that was I'm, bad totally wording. Voting, I'm totally voting my conscience as a citizen. But I just think there are real dangers when the arts committee, unless somebody can show me, and nobody's done this yet tonight, and I didn't bring this to the committee. None nobody's of us. shown me why. Well, I mean, why we should be getting into a political fray that does not seem directly and an immediately relatable to our brief as members of the committee. That's why, that's why I'm pushing back. And I, I, I just think it's, it's in a town like Amherst, it's so important to have these lines drawn clearly as to what hat we're wearing at each moment. Um, so that's that's my point. Sorry, I'll stop now. I guess you you and I will just see it differently where I see it as it's being key to um, current arts and culture opportunities as, as well as contributing to a position for them in the, in the future. But um, I certainly appreciate your, your perspectives. Um, and uh, but we, we have brought this as as a motion and we, we now have to have to finish this. So um i'm i'm not withdrawing the motion but leah if, if you withdraw having seconded it then then that and there's no one else who would second it then that would um or or do we simply take take the vote and let it be uh a record uh and those you know you don't have to vote against but but anyone could abstain as well So, Leah, I think the question is to you as to whether or not you're going to your seconding. Um, thank you. I feel um, like... 
I feel like this is just, it's a hard question. I feel like I don't have a lot of the, um, like, information to make a really, really informed decision right now. But I think going with what I feel and kind of some of the work I've done, I think I'm going to keep seconding the motion and then I'll kind of just let the vote play out. Thank you, Leah. I appreciate that. Okay. So if there's no further discussion, I'll, I'll take the roll call for the vote. Cody. Um, um, yeah, I don't feel it's perfect or Oh, I think in the wild woods, from my memory, got constant mold issues in Fort River. You know, by the sounds of it, it's going under. So it's really a safety or so safety for the performance they bring in where it's rent in the space or bring it in for for its embers. Oh, I get, you know, I'm just a team, but I don't see it as political. I see it as a public safety issue that's Thank you. So, and are you voting in favor or? You're muted. Yeah. Yeah, I'm voting in favor. Thank you so much, Cody. Uh, Robin. Um, abstaining. Okay. Christy. Abstaining. Thank you. Okay, so um, the the motion passes on uh, the majority with two abstaining. Thank you. All good points and I think a really, you know, um, insightful um, conversation. And it will shape our thoughts going into the the upcoming grant cycle. Yes. Thank you. Now that the vote's taken, I just wanted to say something. I, I wanted to jump in, but I didn't want to muddy the waters a little bit. But Christie's question, I think, is a really vital one around, you know, what is the, <clears throat> you can always ask what's the purview of any given position, you know, and I, I agree, that's those are important debates. But I think the earlier question you asked about data, um, you know, not a year, I mean, this is my third grant cycle, and every year we've had at least two, typically three or four grantees that come out of the schools in, in some form or fashion. Um, so I do think, you know, the public school system is a cultural institution, you know, in in, in town and um, it would be helpful to do a, a tally, but I, I can just say informally, just based on experience, you know, it's never fewer than two grantees that have some connection to the public schools. And I think that's that's probably the data point that I would lean on the most and then and then there's also the opportunity for an outside artist or, or institution to come in and perform in the schools which is maybe the bigger benefit here but um, anyway it's 7 45 i, I want to really thank you all for taking the time with that obviously you know that i'm i'm invested in it and and um it's an important topic for me and i i hope i i hope i recuse myself well 
<laughs> but but I but I really appreciate the thought. And this has been a fabulous meeting. Mindy, you know, signed off with huge praise because this is a really great group and um I just we're, we're lucky to be together. So yeah, and I I want to say how thankful I am that we we do have uh Cody and Leah in particular who for many many um grants bring bring your perspective of having uh, been in these these spaces and with this community and with these grantees and have been you know firsthand as far as these these kinds of cultural events um, and, and to have your insights and um, thank thank you so much for sharing those with us and excellent so I I guess with with that uh, I think there's there's no further business and we can um, conclude. Yes. Thank you all so much. Uh, we'll we'll be in next month. Good night, y'all. Thank you. Great meeting. Take care, and and thanks for to our guests for coming. Good night.